And Brandon Cook sets up wide to the right. Lamb comes to the left. Looks toward Lamb. Shoulder shake. Throws! That's going to be caught by Ferguson. Touchdown. Well, these were the two that were going face mask to face mask earlier in the game. I told you, Jake Ferguson's not going to back down from Jamal Adams. A little out and then up. Not bad position, but Adams never looks back. Never found the football. So it's tough for him to be able to adjust. I think Dak uh, realized that Adams was lost out there on an island. And what a play. I told you, the big tight end is athletic. Now they'll go for two with a one-point lead, trying to make it a three-point lead. Two-point try here. 437 left in the fourth. Lamb in motion. Prescott looks the other way. Then over the middle. Oh, two-pointer. Brandon Cooks. Four thirty-seven left in regulation. Dallas thirty-eight, Seattle thirty-five. And now the Seahawks start at their own twenty-five. They used one timeout, so two remaining as we come down the stretch here. Keep in mind, Geno Smith is a guy that is used to being in these situations. He has six game-winning drives in the fourth quarter or in overtime over the last couple years. So this is a chance for number seven. So you got a quarterback that if he has time to throw, he's got the weapons and he's got the experience to make it happen. Metcalf left, lock it. Smith and Jigma to the right. Smith fires up to the 40-yard line. The rookie makes the grab again. Smith and Jigba having his best night of his very brief young yeah. career with a lot more to come. Watch him sell this route, and Bland has gotten so much attention for his ability to keep his eyes and make plays. He turns him. Once he turns him, it's over. Great job of recognizing that matchup and getting the ball to the rookie for a big first down to start this drive. Seven catches, and, of course, it was the pass interference. At the end of the half, that set up the go-ahead touchdown. Now you got DJ Dallas, the backup back, up to the 49. Last time we left Charbonnet, he was in the blue tent. Yep. I'll tell you what, C.D. Lamb looking on, trying to pull this defense through. But I'm going to tell you, one of the stories for me tonight, no matter what happens, is a Seattle offensive line that has not played well in the last three or four weeks has helped Geno Smith against a ferocious Dallas defense and given him in this running game just enough. They sent Charbonnet for just learning to the to the locker room. That means DJ Dallas, special teams guy, doesn't see much action offensively. We'll see a lot right now, including that pass to him, which is low and incomplete. So third and four. Well, they've been going to Jackson Smith and Jigba quite a bit here. If he, depending on the matchup and the coverage that he gets. So Brian Schottenheimer going over things with, with Prescott on the sideline. Ball at the 49-yard line. Crowd pretty much rising as one. Smith to the left side. That's incomplete. No flag coverage is good. Jordan Lewis. A Jordan, the play. I haven't called his name tonight. Now, Jordan Lewis said, you know what? This kid's getting me enough. He Look where the yellow line is. And this is the experience of Lewis. He knows this route's going to be very close to that. Great job of anticipating that quick throw. So he's able to hit him right as the football gets to him. Good job of separating. Going for it on a fourth and four from the 49-yard line. Dallas moves out, now back. Of his back foot, floats one incomplete. Didn't matter whether Bland intercepted or not. In fact, it was better off that he didn't. They saved the yardage. Turn it over. Now you know Dallas is going to dial up the pressure. Geno Smith knew it, and that's why, even though you don't get a sack, watch what Geno Smith has to do, and the reason Jackson Smith and Jigma doesn't see it. 
He's got to get rid of the football. DJ Dallas steps up to be able to pick up the blitz in the middle from, from uh, Clark, but 11 never locates the ball because Geno Smith has to throw it now. And by the time he turns and looks, the ball's already in the air because of that pressure from Dallas. Yep, you had Lawrence, you had Dante Fowler in there. So Dallas, the Cowboys take over the 49. Al Harris going over things with Bland. Start using the clock. We'll see. They will. Pollard. Look at this. For the scrum. Turns nothing into about a four or five yard game. That's Dallas's version of the, the push tush there to be able to get some positive yards. So 36 and 0 are the Seahawks when scoring 35 or more yeah. points. Wow. Well, you, you score 35 or more, you almost <laughs> always win the game. Yeah. But tonight, in jeopardy. Yeah, they get the three timeouts, the two minute warning. It's all about the clock right now with Dak Prescott. And stopping them. Second and six. Yeah, Prescott using all of the play clock. Handed this time to land. First down. A lot more. Tackled from behind to save a touchdown. Takes it to the 20. Right after the game, per usual, it's the J.C. Penny post-game show exclusively on Prime Video. The gang's all here. Daily interviewing the player of the game. Recap it all. First down now at the two-minute mark to the 17. Tony Pollard taken down there and timeout immediately called by Seattle. They're second. Yeah, this second half has had a lot of big plays, but none bigger for Dallas than the way the defense has stepped up. First, it was big to Marcus Lawrence on that fourth down and one play. And then this last time that Geno Smith had the ball because of that pressure, he just had to throw it and hope that Jackson Smith and Jigga would look up and locate it. But because he had to get rid of it early, the Dallas defense does their job. Meanwhile, Geno Smith, that elbow, which suffered the blunt, blunt force trauma from Aaron Donald yeah. a couple of weeks ago. That's right. Kind of fought through it last know, week. Again, and... Yeah. Fought through it. Fought through it in that Rams game. Came yeah. back in at the right. end. Second and six. Work on that. Seattle with one timeout. Keep it on the ground. Pollard going to take a timeout here. They took only three seconds, so now Seattle on the timeouts, third down. Once Seattle again, the standings to be a 30 second timeout. as they stand right now. So in the West, San Fran 8-3. and three. Seattle would drop to 6-6 six and six if they don't come from behind. Rams are 5-6. and six. Rams have Cleveland this weekend. They've already beaten Seattle twice, so they would own that tie break for the moment. Meanwhile, Philly is 10-1, and one, and Dallas would go to 9-3 and three to stay a game and a half back. How about the Eagles and the Niners? Eagles 10 and 1, Niners 8 and 3. If the yep. Niners are somehow able to win that game, you're looking at 10 and 2 Philly and 9 and 3 Dallas. If the Cowboys went out tonight, what a matchup that would be the next week with Philadelphia and Dallas here in Arlington. So Brian Angers had the night off, so is Michael Dixon. No punch in the game, third down and three. First down would wrap it up here. And Prescott will look to end it in effect here. You got all kinds of contact going Huge. on. Yep, you've got Trey Brown is right there. You got C.D. Lamb, the intended receiver. Fourth down. And good position by by uh, Trey Brown, thinking that this ball made. See how he's just bailing already. He doesn't go for that quick slant there. He just gets his body in position there. I'll tell you why it's huge. Is because that's. An incompletion, and the clock stops, right. obviously. And now we got a fourth down play with the offense still out there. Meanwhile, you've had only 14 seconds since the two-minute warning. And let's see if they do indeed go for it, just trying to draw them off. So that will take us to a likely field goal Dallas attempt. Takes first time out. This will be a 30-second timeout. We were at the break there, and we were saying, you know, that big play that Dallas had that got him way down in, in into uh, Seattle 
field and territory, it was like, you know what? That's probably worked out for the best for Seattle. Now they can try to get it stopped, use their timeouts. As it turned out. And get the field goal. You're down six. Now you give the ball to Geno Smith about a minute 35 to go. Well, meanwhile, you know, they went in the, at the end of the first half down the field in 90 seconds without a timeout. So they've been here before. Meanwhile, here is Aubrey, Brandon Aubrey, kid who grew up locally, played soccer at Notre Dame, played in the USFL with the Birmingham Stallions, brought him into camp, 28-year-old rookie, hasn't missed a field goal in his rookie season, 32-yard attempt to try to kick his fourth of the night, which he does. So it's a six-point game. That much time left, as you see on the graphic and let's see what Geno Smith a guy whose elbow was just worked on by the trainers has in store I, I think if you're a Dallas fan you're wondering you know you don't mind trying to take the shot go for the jugular the knockout punch to, to go to CD Lamb but if, if you run the football there think the Seattle's out of timeouts you work that clock down significantly probably you know instead of 143 you're looking at maybe a minute you know, by the time Chino Smith gets the football, so. Yep. A little over, maybe. That's it. Yeah. All right. Before uh, the kick, let's go to Kaylee. Well, guys, it looks like Geno Smith is going back on the field without the padded sleeve on his throwing arm that he's been wearing these past two games to protect that bruised elbow. You saw him getting that massage. The head athletic trainer was also doing some therapeutic movements with him to help him gain range of motion. Yeah, there he is. There's not a chance you're taking number seven out of this game in his mind. No matter what that arm feels like, he's yeah. fought so hard to put his team where they are right now with 35 points up on the board and a minute 43 away from pay dirt and possibly getting out of here with an upset. Yeah. Backup quarterback is Drew Locke, who came over in the Wilson deal. Meanwhile, you got a kick here that goes into the end zone. So they have to go 75 yards in 143. I thought you brought up a really good point about, you know, Kenneth Walker not playing tonight. Now Zach Charbonnet is not out there. And you're looking at DJ Dallas. They have another rookie in Kenny McIntosh, but it's going to be DJ Dallas who is who is out there, the fourth year running back out of Miami. Yeah, mainly special teams. Yeah. we got Kenny McIntosh, a rookie from Georgia, but we haven't seen him. He's active tonight. Meanwhile, first down from the 25. Smith retreating. Smith fires. Right side caught. Out of bounds at the 43-yard line. Tyler Lockett makes that catch. 138 to go. Yeah, Bland out on an island again. This time it's against Lockett, who is known for his ability to run good, clean routes. Sells this to hit to our right, to the inside, and then back outside. And look how quickly he's able to pull away from Bland and a good job by throwing that football on time by Geno Smith. Smith and Jigba, Lockett goes to the left side. Metcalf comes to the right side. Gilmore's on him. Smith hangs in the pocket, fires underneath, caught. That's Noah Fant, the tight end. Made a great catch before, takes it to the 50-yard line. Bell makes the stop there. Clock ticking down, 125 and running. This offensive line doing just enough to give Geno Smith his time he needs to throw. Second and two. Here comes Parsons. Gets the pass away. It's incomplete. So 113 now, again intended for Noah Fant. Third down and two. So that time, Abe Lucas, the right tackle, matched up one-on-one -on -one against Micah Parsons. He, he did everything in his power. Watch him, 72. I mean, he's using his hands, he's using his backside, whatever it takes. <laughs> Keep 11 out of there. Different kind of tush push. <laughs> That's right. Third and two. Smith, 23 of 39. Thrown for 334 yards tonight. Retreats. Throws. Broken up. Fourth down. Jordan Lewis is there, intended for Smith and Jigba. Yeah, that time, the Wiley veteran Lewis, the seventh-year man, the seventh-year man out of Michigan, really good coverage on that crosser. Here we go. Yeah, here we go. To the, at the 50. 
It's a first down or it's the end of the game. Seattle 0 for 2 on fourth. Three receivers come to the right side. Keeps DJ Dallas in the backfield. Lockett comes to the slot. Here comes Parsons. And he forces the pass incomplete. And that will wrap it up. You talk about unabated to the quarterback. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, it, obviously a, a miscue as well as they played tonight. The biggest play of the game. They just let him free. DJ Dallas is trying to come over, but there's no way a back's going to come over from here over to the to the far right. And I think it's because they bring Curse up. It confuses the offensive line. The right tackle, Lucas, doesn't kick out. He comes down on 90, Lawrence. And just a miscue, miscommunication by the offensive line at the worst possible time. So two kneel downs will end this game. So much success on third down tonight for 0 for 3 on fourth down. The Seahawks come in. You got to give them a ton of credit. Resilient team. Two straight losses. All they have coming up now is at San Francisco a week from Sunday. And then Philadelphia goes to Seattle. Meanwhile, the Dallas Cowboys will go to 9-3. and three. They get their first win against a team with a winning record. They face Philadelphia a week from Sunday. Then they go to Buffalo and at Miami. You got to give a lot of credit to the Cowboys defense. We put up a drive chart of, of Pete Carroll's group and Geno Smith. What they were able to do is touchdown, miss field goal, touchdown, 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 touchdown. And in the second half, when they needed to step up and make plays, they did. And that's what was able to allow them to win this game. 41 35, back and forth tonight. A lot of terrific performances in this one. Cowboys 14 straight.